Welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to finish up the transportation problem. In particular, we're going to be formulating the decision variables, objective function, and the constraints. So last video, we looked at formulating the parameters, the sets, and the data file. And in this video, we're going to do the rest of the model. So we're going to formulate the decision variables, the objective function, and all the constraints. So let's start off with this decision variable. It says xij is equal to the number of units shipped from supply point i to demand point j. So if we think about this decision variable in the context of our power co problem, we have our power plants which are supplying power to our cities which need the power. And for each one of these possible linkages between the power plants and the cities, or between the supply points and the demand points, there's a decision variable. We have to decide what we're sending from each supply point to each city. So for plant one alone, there's four decision variables. We need to figure out how much we're sending from plant one to city one, how much we're sending from plant one to city two, um, et cetera. And for plant two, there's an additional four decision variables. So we need to decide how much we're sending from plant two to city one, plant two to city two, plant two to city three, and plant two to city four. And then finally, for plant three, we have an additional four variables which are doing a similar thing. So to formulate those in Piomo, um, we have our sort of declaration here. And what we see is that we've called it model.x. We've said it's a variable. And then to say that we have one of these for each supply point and demand point combination, we provide it sort of two sets. We provide it the model.supply set, and we provide it the model.demand set. And then lastly, this part that says within non-negative reals, that's taking care of our program's non-negativity constraints. So that's our decision variable. And now let's take a look at this objective function. So this objective function is basically saying we want to minimize the total cost. And the total cost is made up of the cost to ship from plant 1, the cost to ship from plant 2, and the cost to ship from plant 3. So for each one of our supply nodes, Every time it ships something to a city, there's a cost involved. So there's a cost um, if plant one is shipping to city one, plus a cost for whatever it's shipping to plant two, uh, city two, plus a cost for whatever plant one is city, shipping to city three, plus a cost for whatever plant one is shipping to city four. And if we were to write just a component that was calculating those costs, it would look like what we see down at the bottom, where we say the cost to ship from plant one is the sum over all the different demand points, um, C for plant one uh, to demand point J times X of plant one to demand point J. And then we would add to that all the shipping costs that we're incurring from shipping from plant two, which would have a similar summation just for plant two. And then we'd also add to that the shipping costs for plant three. Um, where we'd add up all the different shipping costs for shipping thing electricity from plant three to the different cities. And that would have a similar summation. Um, so if we were to write all three of those summations out, we would see that we'd have a component that's calculating the shipping costs from plant one, and we'd have a component that's calculating the shipping costs from plant two, and we have a component that's calculating the shipping costs from plant three. So we can see here that we have a sum of sums. And if we were um, to sort of write this more succinctly, we can see that each of these um, sums looks very similar with the exception that we're switching the plants. So we can actually say, um, condense these down um, into a single summation where we're summing over each one of our supplies and what we're summing over is another sum. So the first part sort of says we're adding something. One, we're adding something for each of our supplies. And the inner summation says, and this is the thing that we are adding together. The thing that we are adding looks like this. So if we were to put this in Piomo, we can see the, the objective function up at the top of our screen there. 
And some things to note, we have a double sum in our objective function formulation, but in Pioma we just write the word sum a single time. And then that inner part of our formulation, um, we just use our model components that we defined in Pioma. So we use model.c and in square brackets i comma j times model.x and then in square brackets i comma j. And then the ranges on each of our sums comes after sort of the body of that summation. And so to, to have two ranges, we just put for i in model.supplies, and then right after it, we write for j in model.demands. There's no commas or anything that separates them. And then finally, we have to connect this objective function rule back to our model. Um, so we create a model component. This time we called it min cost, and we set it to an objective function um, by calling the objective function. And then we told it which rule to use, which is the objective rule that we just defined. And then finally, we said that it was a minimization function. So we set the sense to minimize. So he's going to go down and live in our program. And then the next part that we're going to go over are the constraints. Uh, so we'll first look at these supply constraints. So in our Piomo model, we have supply, or in our PowerCo problem, we have supply nodes and we have demand nodes. And each of these supply nodes can send electricity to each of these four cities. Um, and that the amount that's being sent is captured by our decision variables. And what we want to make sure of is that as we're sending electricity to each of these cities, that we don't send more electricity than that supply node has. So if we added up all of these decision variables associated with plant one, we want to make sure that it exactly equals 35. So we don't want it to be less than less than 35, or this plant would be producing electricity that didn't have a place to go. And we don't want it to be more than 35 because then it would be shipping electricity that didn't exist. Um, so the electricity shipped out of plant one has to equal the supply at plant one. And then we have a similar constraint for plant two. Whatever we're sending out of plant two has to exactly equal what's available to send. So all of the different amounts that we're sending out of plant two have to add up to equal exactly 50. And then finally for plant three, it's very similar. We are gonna add up all of the different amounts that we're shipping to each of our different cities. And we wanna make sure that that equals the supply at plant three. So if we were to look at those one on top of the, each other, we'd see that we have a constraint for plant one that's making sure we meet that plant's supply. We have a constraint for plant two, and we have a similar constraint for plant three. So these all look very similar, with the exception of um, we're changing the plant that we're looking at for each of these constraints. So in this case, we can write these in a more condensed form where we say, all right, we have one of these constraints for each one of our supplies. And then the pattern that we use to make each constraint is this um, pattern that you see here, where we're summing over all the demands, and we're summing xij. And every time we make a constraint, we replace that i with one of our supply nodes. So we'll replace the i's that we see first with plant 1, then with plant two, and then finally with plant three. So to enter something like this into Piomo, we see our constraint down there. Let's move it up higher. All right. So the first thing that we notice here is that in our formulation, we have this for all i that are elements of supplies. Whenever we have a for all in our formulation, that means when we create our constraint rule, that we need to pass it, that we need to pass this function of value for i. So we need to include i in our function definition. And then um, when we, when Piomo calls this function, it's gonna pass it an i. So everywhere we see an i in the return statement, it's gonna use the i that's being passed. In our return statement, um, Similar to our objective function, there's a sum in our formulation. There's a summation sign, so we have the word sum in our return statement. The body of our constraint is just adding up 
all the decision variables. So we're adding a model.x and in square brackets i comma j. Um, we're adding these up for all of the demands. So for all of our cities. Our equal sign in our formulation turns into a double equal sign in our constraint. And then finally, we replace s sub i with our parameter um, model.s with i in square brackets. And then lastly, we have to connect this rule to our model. So we create um, this statement that says model.supply constraints is equal to a constraint. And the first part of the constraint function tells POMO um, sort of what set to use when it's passing data to the rule. So here we're going to use the model.supply. So it's going to pass each element of that supply set um, to the supply rule. And then the last thing that we're going to look at is the demand constraints. So these demand constraints, if we look at each one of our cities or each one of our demand points, city one, for example, can receive electricity from plant one, plant two, and plant three. And we want to make sure that all of the electricity that city one receives is meeting their demand. So we want to check that the electricity shipped from all the plants to city one equals the demand at city one. And then we want to look at over all of our supply nodes and compare it to what's being sent to city two. So we want to check on city two and make sure that all of the electricity from all of the different plants that's being sent to city two equals the demand at city two. And then we have a similar constraint for city three. And then finally, we have a similar constraint for city four, where we're looking at all of the plants that could be sending electricity to city four and making sure that city four is receiving um, exactly 30 kilowatt hours. So if we were to write all these constraints out um, one on top of each other, we see that they all look very similar with the exception that each one of our um, cities is being used in, in one of the constraints. So we can say that we have one of these constraints for each one of our demand nodes or each one of our demands. And what these constraints look like or the pattern that these constraints follow um, are, are um, included here where we say we're summing over all of the different supplies, um, the values of x, i, j, and that has to equal the demand at point j. And then um, these constraints would then go and use each one of the demand points and replace it, um, the j's first with city one, then they'll replace the j's with city two, then with city three, then with city four to make all four of these constraints. So if we were to put those in Piomo, it looks like that constraint set down at the bottom. Uh, so we can see that we have a for all j that are elements of demand. So our demand rule um, function is going to need sort of a placeholder for j. So we see that j placeholder there. And then every time it receives a value for j, it's going to replace those j's that we see in the return statement with whatever j it was provided. And then we see a summation in our formulation. So we're going to use the word sum. Um, what's being summed up is just the decision variable x, i, j. So we see model dot x in square brackets i comma j. And then the range on our summation um, is found in the in the part of the summation call that says for i in model dot supplies. And here we have an equal sign in our constraint, which turns into a double equal sign in PMO. And then finally, the D sub J is represented by our parameter called model dot D um, in square brackets J. And then when we're creating this constraint, we need to pass as the first argument of the constraint function what set we want it to use to make these constraints. So we want it to use our set of demands. So we're going to pass it model dot demands, and that'll um, 
um, use our city one, city two, city three, city four as elements of our J um, when it, when this model when PMO creates these constraints. And so there's our final formulation for the transportation problem. And just remember that there's two lines at the very top of this file that you can't see right now where we declare the abstract model and then we import the um, PMO packages.